Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be doing a mixed review with problems. I'm planning to solve 25 problems but it's probably going to be in pieces depending on the length of each video. Let's get started. Now first problem we're going to be solving an equation x plus 1 over x equals 1. As you hopefully know, this can be turned into a quadratic equation. First of all, note that x is not supposed to equal 0. Under those conditions, we can multiply everything by x. That gives us x squared plus 1 equals x. And I'm putting everything on the same side gives us x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. And if we do use the quadratic formula on this one, then we get the following. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is square root of 3i. By the way, that happens to be square root of negative 3, but I just wrote it as square root of 3i with the plus minus sign divided by 2a. So those are going to be the solutions. And as you know, those are complex numbers. If you want, you can also write them in polar form. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. We have a complex number z equals square root of 3 plus the square root of 2 times i. And we're supposed to find three things, the complex conjugate, the reciprocal, and the absolute value. So those are by definition easy, but my goal is to just review uh, the complex numbers uh, by using this problem. So z conjugate is uh, basically obtained by changing the imaginary part. So it's going to be square root of 3 minus square root of 2i. 1 over z basically means that you're just going to divide 1 by that number. So let's go ahead and write it as a division problem. But then, of course, we're supposed to use the complex conjugate, right? So let's multiply root 3 minus root 2i, top and the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify this. Obviously, the numerator is just going to be the same thing since we're multiplying by 1. And the denominator is from two, uh, sum of two squares. You'll remember this, hopefully. 3 plus 2, which is 5. And again, this can be written as root 3 over 5 minus root 2 over 5i, but this is also good enough. Now, how do you find the absolute value of z? Well, we kind of did. If you multiply z and z conjugate, you'll get absolute value of z squared. In other words, the absolute value of z is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that will be square root of 5. Notice that this number is just square root of 5 squared. All right? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number three. Number three is fairly easy. You are supposed to uh, simplify this. Uh, you can make a common denominator, but the easier way to do it is using conjugates again. So let's go ahead and multiply by 2 minus i here and multiply by 3 plus i here, which will get rid of the i's at the bottom. Now, numerator here, the first one is going to be 2 minus i. At the bottom, we're going to have a difference, I mean, a sum of two squares. 4 plus 1, which is 5, and then this is going to give you 3 plus i, and then 3 squared plus 1 squared, 9 plus 1, is going to give you 10. Now is a good time to make a common denominator, multiply by 2, and you're going to get 4 minus 2i plus 3 minus 3 plus i divided by 10, and then 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 minus i divided by 10. And again, this can be written as 7 over 10 minus 1 over 10i, if you really wanted to write it in standard form, A plus BI format. Okay, that's number three. Let's go ahead and take a look at number four now. So we've done similar problems before, but this one is fairly easy. Again, we can talk about two different methods. You can basically distribute the Z, or you can just replace Z with A plus BI, and then just solve for A and B. Or there's actually an easier way to do it. That will be dividing both sides by 2 plus I. So how do you divide two complex numbers? Well, actually, you kind of use conjugates, right? We've just done one. So let's multiply by 2 minus i and 2 minus i. And z becomes, now we're going to go ahead and distribute this. So let's go ahead and write it as a product first. And at the bottom, from the sum of two squares, we get 4 plus 1, which is 5. Now let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. That's going to give us 10 minus 5i plus 2i minus i squared divided by 5. And as you know, i squared is equal to negative 1. So negative i squared is just going to be positive 1. 10 plus 1 is equal to 11. Minus 5 plus 2, that gives you minus 3i divided by 5. So this should be the answer. If you want to write it again in standard form, you can. Okay, so that will be the answer, the z uh, number that satisfies this equation. 
All right, let's go ahead and now take a look at number five. Okay, the question is asking for writing something in polar form. How do you write one minus i in polar form? You can basically just try to plot it. Uh, one comma negative one is where this number is located. And then think about the distance from zero from Pythagorean theorem. This is just gonna be square root of two, and that will be r, and you also need the theta. But remember, this is a 45-45 triangle. Therefore, the angle measured from the positive x would be 315 degrees or 2 pi minus pi over 4. I would uh, just write it in radians most of the time. It's better that way. And r would be a root 2. So, and that would be equivalent to 7 pi over 4. These are the two things you need. Basically, if you have a number in the form of a plus pi, it could be written as r times e to the power i theta. And that will be the polar form. So in this case, r is square root of 2 and theta is 7 pi over 4. So you can write this in so many different ways. You can kind of write it like this, or if you want, you can put the 7 uh, in the front and kind of write this as 7 pi i over 4 as well. All right, that's the polar form. And of course, you could also write it using Euler's formula. Uh, e to the power i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. But this is a better, more compact form. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number six. We're supposed to write 2i in polar form. Similarly, if you think about how to plot 2i, that will be equivalent to 0 plus 2i. So it's, in other words, 0 comma 2. So that's going to appear here. That's our number. And of course, r would be a 2 here. And the theta would be pi over 2 because it's on the uh, imaginary, positive imaginary axis. And then we got everything we need. 2i can be written as r, which is 2 times e to the power i times pi over 2. Just remember, e to the i pi over 2 is always equivalent to i. Okay? That also helps us with other things, but that's a different story. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this one, negative 5i. So we're really practicing the polar form here. Negative 5i is going to be in the negative region of the imaginary axis but its modulus is still going to be positive because it's always non-negative, right? And theta, in this case, would be 3 pi over 2, as you can see here. So those are the two things we need. Negative 5i then can be written as 5 times e to the power i times 3 pi over 2, or if you want to write it, 5e to the power 3 pi i over 2. Okay? That would be the polar form. Great, now let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Hmm. Root 3 plus i, so we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem and special triangles. So let's go ahead and graph it. Square root of 3 is about 1.7, so it's greater than 1. So you're going to get a triangle that kind of looks like this. Square root of 3 units and then 1 unit this way. So it's going to be root 3 and this is going to be a 1i. And then to find the modulus, we're going to connect it to the origin and find distance using Pythagorean theorem, but it's basically going to be 2. So you have the 30, 60, 90 triangle. This could be measured as 30 degrees, or you can write it as pi over 6 radians, right? Therefore, our theta is going to be pi over 6, and the modulus is going to be 2. Therefore, root 3 plus i can be written as 2 times e to the power i times pi over 6. Again, you can write it in different ways. Now, let me talk about an alternative method here. Once you find that the modulus is 2, you can basically take out a 2 and then write this as root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. And if you look inside the parentheses, you will find the cosine of an angle and the sine of an angle, and that should be the same angle. Once you identify that angle, you can go ahead and plug it in because obviously root 3 over 2 is going to be the same thing as cosine pi over 6. And of course, we're looking at an acute angle because we are in the first quadrant. And how do we know that? Because x and y values are both positive. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem, which is number 9. This is a special power because 1 plus i is special. You can use the binomial theorem if you want. Be my guest if you want. But there's a much easier way with... 1 plus i to the second power being 2i. We can go ahead and do the following. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
Now write 1 plus i to the power 100 as 1 plus i to the second power, then, then that to the 50th power. And we know that 1 plus i squared is just 2i. So all we have to do is raise 2i to the 50th power. But from the product property, we can basically write this as 2 to the 50 times i to the 50. And i to the power 50, you're just going to be looking at it mod 4 because i to the power 4n is always 1 for when n is an integer. So 50 leaves a remainder of 2. In other words, you can kind of break it down as e i to the power 48 times i squared. This is going to be 1. So i to the power 50 is going to be the same thing as i squared, which is negative 1. And then the answer is just going to be negative 2 to the power 50. Make sense? That will be the answer. Obviously, that's a very large number. Think about it as 1,000 to the fifth power. That's going to be a very, very large number. About. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. Now, we have a number in uh, written in trigonometric or polar form, and we're going to raise it to the fourth power. Fairly easy. The Moivers, or the Moa, I can never say the original name, says that you're supposed to multiply the argument by 4 and just raise r to the fourth power. But r is 1 because it's not written, therefore we're just going to multiply pi over 12 by 4, which gives us 4 pi over 12. And of course, we're going to simplify the same thing here. 4 pi over 12 is the same thing as pi over 3, if you simplify it. And then we're going to get what from here? Cosine pi over 3 basically is cosine 60, which is 1 half. And sine pi over 3 or sine 60 would be the same as cosine 30, which is root 3 over 2. And then multiply by i, and you're all set. Okay? Great, let's go ahead and take a look at number 11. So again, we have a number, but this time it's not written in polar form and it's raised to the 12th power. Let's go ahead and turn this into polar form. First of all, think about the modulus. Modulus is going to be a square root of 9 plus 3, which is 12, which is 2 root 3. And I can kind of take out a 2 root 3 here. And when I do, I basically need to divide negative 3 by 2 root 3. And that's going to be negative root 3 over 2 if you simplify it. And if you divide the root 3 by 2 root 3, you're going to get 1 half. So our angle hopefully is visible at this point because we're kind of looking at an angle whose cosine is this one and whose sine is 1 half. Well, I'm thinking sine 1 half tells me that it looks like 30 degrees, but it is in the which quadrant? It is going to be in the second quadrant. So you're thinking second quadrant with the longer side this way. So it's kind of like if you reflect the 30-60 triangle this way, you're going to get a 30 degree angle here, but that's just going to be 150 degrees or pi minus pi over 6, which is a quick way to write 150. That will be 5 pi over 6. So it's going to be 2 root 3 times e to the power i times 5 pi over 6, and then we're supposed to raise it to the 12th power. And that's going to give us 2 root 3 to the 12th power. And then if you multiply these, you're going to get 10 pi and 10 pi. If you take out, you know, it's just multiple of 2 pi. So it's just going to be the same thing as e to the power 2 pi i, which is 1. So the answer is going to be 2 root 3 to the 12th power. If you want to write it as 12 to the 6th power, that's fine as well. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do number 12, and then we'll take a break, and then do the part 2 later with the rest of the problems. How do you find square roots of 1 plus i? Well, 1 plus i can basically be written as, if you think about it, it's the 45-45 triangle, so that's a pi over 4, and the modulus is going to be square root of 2. It's going to be square root of 2 times e to the power i pi over 4, and then let's call this z. The square roots of z, z to the power 1 half, one of them is just going to be square root of the square root of 2, which is the fourth root of 2. Divide this power by 2, and that's going to give you i pi over 8. And the next one is just going to be this plus pi, so it's going to be the fourth root of 2 again times e to the power i times, now pi over 8, you're supposed to add pi to it, which is going to give you 9 pi over 8. And this brings us to the end of the first part. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with the second part. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.